We're going to take a look at the iris and ciliary body here. So at low magnification, here you can see the cornea, the iris, and the anterior lens. We're going to follow the cornea around, um, go past the iris, and here we have the ciliary body. Now there's three major parts to it. We have our pars plana, which is going to be this flatter region here. Then we have the pars placata, which is going to have um, the processes there. Anteriorly, you can see here, this is the physiologic angle that we've talked about. So we have the iris root. You can see where it's very narrow there, the iris root. And then just anterior to that, you have the anterior face of the ciliary body. And that is going to attach here to the scleral spur. And just anterior to the scleral spur is going to be the trabecular meshwork. And you can see the trabecular meshwork here is going to be get a little bit denser there. And then we have Schlem's canal. Schlem's canal being this larger empty area there, uh, a little bit more peripheral or exterior than the trabecular meshwork. And then if you remember the last structure of the angle that we talked about is Schwabi's line, which is the uh, termination of Desimé's membrane. So if we look near the endothelium, you can see this pink layer light lighter pink at the endothelium and you can see that when you get to just before the trabecular meshwork it disappears so that would be the termination of that and that is this uh schwabi slide so let's go back here um and you can see yeah so the ciliary muscle fibers are going to attach to the scleral spur here and that's why when the ciliary muscle contracts it pulls on the scleral spur and that pulling opens up the trabecular meshwork and can increase outflow and now let's take a look here so within the ciliary body um, we have all this connective tissue and muscle fibers here it's hard to tell um, if you look at the diagram from the lecture you know there's those uh, different <clears throat> sections of muscle. Like if you look out here, um, you can see they're kind of running more linear um, and you get more cross sections here as you move more internally. Uh, but it's hard to really differentiate, you know, layer from layer. And then the other thing we want to look, make sure we look at is the epithelium. So as we move towards the, um, you know, away from the sclera in the ciliary body, uh, we have the two layers of epithelium. Um, right now the pointer is in the non-pigmented ciliary epithelium, which you can probably figure out because this is definitely the pigmented ciliary epithelium. So the non-pigmented, remember that's closer to the anterior chamber, and the pigmented is um, closer to the ciliary stroma. <clears throat> And one of the things we always talked about is that transition. So as we move down through the pars plana, we move closer to the aura serrata, where we transition from retina to ciliary body. You can see still there is a non-pigmented ciliary epithelium and a pigmented ciliary epithelium. And we're going to continue posterior. And you can see... It's probably easiest to see those subtle changes to the um, non-pigmented epithelium. And then all of a sudden we get into, sorry, I think I got lost. You can see those, um, that non-pigmented ciliary epithelium as it moves posterior transitions into neural retina. So you can start to see those nerve uh, fibers appear with, sorry, this one's not the best transition. I'll check the other side. I thought this one was better. Um, but now you can see those retinal layers 
and then we have the RPE um, just past that and so the RPE is going to transition into that pigmented ciliary epithelium. I'm going to take a look at the other side of this eye uh, and see if that is any better. So here we have all the layers of the retina. We're moving to what would be more peripheral retina, moving more anteriorly. Still have those retinal layers. And then you can see they kind of cut off here. So you have the termination of the retinal layers and the continuation of the non-pigmented ciliary epithelium. And then you have that the RPE transitioning to the pigmented ciliary epithelium. Now let's take a look at the iris here real quick. So we can follow, oh, remember there's also that, um, the, that supracoroid when we're near the ciliary body, we have the supraciliary. So there's that potential space there. You can kind of see that here on this side. Um, but the, if you remember that the stroma of the ciliary body is continuous with the stroma of the iris. So you can see we're going to transition right into the iris here. And we can take a look at the different layers of the iris. So most anterior here, we have the anterior border layer, which is going to be, remember that's not an epithelium, that's just um, dense pigmented cells. And then posterior to the anterior border layer, we have the uh, iris stroma, which you can see. Let's see if the other side a little any better. They're about the same. So anterior border layer, you can see how it's kind of densely um, populated there. Then the stroma is kind of a looser connective tissue. You have um, those trabeculae, so you have more uh, more intra intra trabecular space. Um, if you remember, the uh, iris sphincter muscle is going to be in the pupillary region, so you can see that there. It doesn't run the full length of the of the iris, um, but it's kind of in that stromal region, so you can see it right here, and that will be near the pupil margin. And then um, we have the anterior epithelium and the posterior epithelium. And you can see that both of those are pigmented, um, but the posterior is going to be more darkly pigmented than the anterior. Now, right now, in this case, posterior is up and anterior is down. And remember that the anterior epithelium is also home uh, to the dilator muscle. So it's kind of hard to see there, but if you look real close, you can kind of see that um, the muscular cells, kind of the, the fibers coming off of the anterior epithelium. Uh, and that's um, the main uh, layers of the iris. A couple things to kind of draw your attention to is right there, at the uh, pupillary margin, we have the pupillary rough, which is where the epithelium kind of uh, turns over and you have that physiological ectropion. So you can actually see that uh, pupillary rough uh, on your patients because it rolls a little bit anterior and you can see the anterior and posterior epithelium of the, of the iris there at the pupil margin. So I will uh, I'll also upload some pictures to go with this, um, but that's those are the major points of the um, iris and ciliary body that I wanted to show you, and you can um, go through the rest of the lab handout.
uh, and look at this and some pictures.